we all like getting insider tips and tricks. It can be a very quick way to go from being a novice to a relative expert in a fairly short space of time. If you're new to cycling, the right tips can help you start off on the right foot and make it easier to progress and improve. And even if you've been cycling for many years, it's sometimes good to go back to basics because it's easy to fall into bad habits and overlook the obvious. Here then are just a few of my key tips and tricks for cycling. One of the most basic and probably the most important tip is to get a proper bike fit. Now, just as you wouldn't go into a shop and buy clothes or shoes that were too tight or too loose for you, you wouldn't buy or even ride a bike that doesn't fit you properly. A really good bike fit can be pretty technical and a complete science all of its own, but at its heart, it's only three measurements. The seat height, the seat for and aft position and the reach. It's important to get these right because not only will it help you to ride further and faster, but it will help reduce the risk of getting stresses, strains and injuries. Potentially, you will be riding your bike for hours at a time, so being comfortable is vitally important. If you aren't, then you probably won't enjoy your riding and that will be the end of it. Your cycling will die literally on its ass right there. Now there is no doubt that bikes are incredibly complex machines and this can be very intimidating to some people. But at their hearts, bikes can also be very easy and straightforward. You can leave the more complicated stuff to the qualified bike mechanic at your local bike shop, but it's vitally important to have at least a basic knowledge of bike maintenance, which luckily is fairly easy to learn. Good maintenance starts even before you go out for a ride by giving your bike a quick safety check. So making sure the frame isn't broken and hasn't got any cracks, making sure that the brakes work and the gears index properly and the tyres are at the correct pressure. When you're actually out on the road, the most likely thing you will need to do is fix a flat. And then once you're home, you'll need to know how to clean and lube your bike. This said, knowing what to do is only half the story. If you don't have the right tools and spares actually with you out on the road, it might still mean a long walk or expensive taxi ride to get home. So always make sure that you have everything you need right there with you on the bike. If you'd like to know how to do things like fix a flat, tighten up your brakes and index your gears properly, I've included a link to my basic maintenance how-to playlist in the description below. For many people, when they think of cycle clothing, they're thinking of people wearing skin-tight lycra. But nowhere in the rulebook does it say that you absolutely have to. Those who choose to wear lycra do so because it's the most appropriate thing to wear. And by that, I mean that it's comfortable, aerodynamic, and wicks sweat away from your body. But if lycra really isn't for you, then just wear what you feel comfortable with. However, I would suggest investing in a pair of cycle-specific shorts. Now, they don't necessarily have to be Lycra ones, but they should at least have a padded insert or chamois, as it will help you feel far more comfortable on the saddle, particularly on long rides. I would also suggest buying some cycling gloves and sunglasses. Now, these aren't just to keep your hands warm and the sun out of your eyes. The gloves should be padded, as this will make it more comfortable on the handlebars and offer a degree of protection should you take a tumble. And the sunglasses will help protect your eyes from wind and dust. If you are very new to cycling, the thought of riding on a busy road can be very intimidating. And indeed, even if you're an experienced cyclist who for whatever reason has lost their confidence, getting back on the bike can be difficult. 
The best way to build it up is to start out on very quiet roads and then move on to the busier routes as you feel more comfortable. It might also help to go out riding with someone else, even if that person is also new to cycling. When you do go out on the road, it can be very easy to let enthusiasm get the better of you and take on rides that perhaps you aren't quite ready for. Challenging yourself is one thing, but riding off into the horizon never to be seen again is quite another. When planning out rides, try to be mindful of the distance and gradients involved, your current level of fitness and how long you expect it will take you to do the ride. If you think you'll be riding for more than an hour or so, it's also very important to ensure that you have enough food to fuel yourself and enough fluid so that you're properly hydrated. If you get this wrong, you run the risk of getting the bonk, which believe me, is nowhere near as much fun as it sounds. In fact, it's a pretty horrible experience. Your legs will go all weak, you'll have no energy, and you'll just want to get off the bike, curl up in the nearest ditch and suck your thumb. Cycling is best enjoyed in the company of friends, so my next tip would be to join a cycling club. Again, I know this can be pretty scary for some, but it's surprising how a common interest can bring people together. Joining an established club will introduce you to plenty of like-minded people with many years of riding experience. Most clubs will also have some kind of regular group ride that will show you new routes and help you to become fitter and faster. Plus, it will also help with your road confidence. If a formal club is not for you though, why not create your own informal group with the people you already know? Cycling is so popular these days that there are bound to be people in your social circle that you might not know are cyclists. This social element of cycling is not just limited to the real world. It's also now possible to connect with cyclists anywhere on the planet through an app called Strava, which is a bit like a cross between Facebook and a GPS cycling computer. The basic account is completely free and will allow you to log your rides, share your rides with the people you follow, and even get competitive on segments. Strava is a great way to add an extra dimension to your cycling, so go ahead and sign up now. As we all know, cycling is not only great fun, but it's also an environmentally friendly form of transport and a fantastic way of getting some exercise. But sometimes the thought of actually getting on a bike, particularly for the first time, can be intimidating because at first glance, it appears to be a lot more difficult than it actually is. Hopefully I've made it slightly less mysterious. Thanks for watching.